A powerful magnitude 7.5 earthquake struck northern Japan on December 8, 2025, triggering an immediate crisis response across three prefectures. Within minutes, approximately 90,000 residents received evacuation orders as tsunami warnings blanketed the coastlines of Hokkaido, Aomori, and Iwate. This seismic event represents one of the most significant earthquakes to impact Japan's northern regions in recent years. The tremors not only caused immediate structural damage and injuries, but also raised critical questions about nuclear facility safety and the potential for an even larger seismic event in the coming week. We are going to break down the complete timeline of this earthquake, analyze the emergency response systems that protected thousands of lives Examine the nuclear facility protocols that were triggered and explore the Prime Minister's urgent warning about future megaquake risks. The earthquake struck at precisely the moment when Japan's advanced seismic monitoring network detected the initial P waves racing through the Earth's crust. The Japan Meteorological Agency's sensors immediately identified the epicenter and calculated the magnitude at 7.5 triggering automated alert systems across the affected regions. The tremors hit Hokkaido, Aomori, and Iwat with varying intensities, but the impact was felt most severely in coastal communities, where the combination of ground shaking and tsunami risk created a dual emergency scenario. Seismic intensity readings showed the strongest shaking concentrated in areas closest to the fault rupture zone. Within the first 10 minutes following the initial tremor, local authorities had activated comprehensive evacuation protocols. Approximately 90,000 residents received immediate evacuation orders. This massive displacement required coordination between municipal emergency management offices, prefectural authorities, and national disaster response agencies. Emergency response teams deployed across the three prefectures with remarkable efficiency. Local fire departments, police units, and self-defense force personnel moved into predetermined positions to assist with evacuations and to conduct immediate damage assessments. The coordination between these agencies demonstrated the effectiveness of Japan's disaster, preparedness infrastructure. The human cost became apparent within hours of the initial earthquake. At least 30 injuries were reported across the affected areas, with the distribution of casualties reflecting the intensity patterns of the seismic waves. Most injuries occurred in areas where older buildings experienced structural damage or where residents were caught off guard by falling objects and debris. Infrastructure damage assessment teams immediately began documenting the earthquake's impact on critical systems transportation networks experienced significant disruptions, with railway services suspended across multiple lines while safety inspections were conducted. Highway sections showed evidence of surface cracking and structural stress, requiring immediate engineering evaluations. The Tohoku Shinkansen, a critical transportation artery for the region, automatically activated its earthquake detection system and brought all trains to controlled stops. This safety protocol, developed after previous major earthquakes, prevented potential derailments and protected passengers from injury during the strongest shaking. Power grid operators reported outages, affecting thousands of households, though the electrical infrastructure proved more resilient than in past major earthquakes. Emergency generators at critical facilities including hospitals and communication centers, activated successfully to maintain essential services during the initial response phase. Communication networks remained largely functional, allowing emergency services to coordinate effectively and enabling residents to contact family members and receive updated evacuation instructions. This connectivity proved crucial for managing the large-scale population displacement across the three prefectures. The immediate aftermath revealed the effectiveness of Japan's building codes and seismic engineering standards. While structural damage occurred, the majority of modern buildings withstood magnitude 7.5 tremors without catastrophic failure. 
This resilience significantly reduced casualty numbers and allowed emergency responders to focus on evacuation procedures rather than extensive search and rescue operations. Emergency shelters across the affected region opened their doors to accommodate the displaced population. These facilities, pre-positioned with supplies and staffed according to established protocols, provided immediate refuge for families forced to leave their homes due to structural damage or tsunami risk. The coordinated response demonstrated how decades of seismic preparedness investment had created systems capable of managing large-scale earthquake emergencies with remarkable efficiency and minimal loss of life. The earthquake's location beneath the ocean floor immediately triggered Japan's sophisticated tsunami warning system. Within three minutes of the initial seismic detection, automated alerts were broadcasting across coastal communities, warning residents of incoming waves and urging immediate evacuation to higher ground. Coastal monitoring stations along the affected shoreline began recording the first tsunami waves approximately 25 minutes after the earthquake. The initial readings showed wave heights that varied significantly along the coastline, reflecting the complex interaction between the seismic source and underwater topography. The highest recorded tsunami wave reached 70 centimeters at monitoring stations along the Hokkaido coast, while this height might seem modest compared to historical tsunami events. The speed and force of these waves created dangerous conditions for anyone caught in coastal areas. Even relatively small tsunami waves can generate powerful currents capable of sweeping away vehicles and structures. Additional monitoring points recorded waves ranging from 30 to 60 centimeters across Aomori and Iwate prefectures. The variation in wave heights demonstrated how local coastal geometry and seafloor bathymetry influence tsunami propagation. Areas with shallow approaches and funnel-shaped bays experienced amplified wave effects, while other coastal sections saw reduced impact. The Tsunami Observation Network continued tracking wave activity throughout the night with sensors detecting multiple wave arrivals as the energy reflected off the complex coastline. This ongoing monitoring provided critical data for determining when it would be safe to lift evacuation orders and allow residents to return to coastal areas. By early December 9th, approximately 12 hours after the initial earthquake, wave heights had diminished to levels considered safe for coastal activities. The Japan Meteorological Agency made the decision to lift tsunami warnings across all affected prefectures, allowing the massive evacuation operation to transition into a controlled return process. Nuclear facilities across the region immediately activated emergency protocols designed to ensure reactor safety during seismic events. The earthquake's magnitude triggered automatic safety systems at multiple installations including the Rakasho reprocessing plant in Aomori Prefecture. At Rakasho, operated by Japan Nuclear Fuel Limited, emergency procedures were implemented within minutes of detecting seismic waves from the earthquake. The facility's earthquake detection system automatically shut down non-essential operations and initiated comprehensive safety inspections of all critical systems. During these safety checks, plant operators discovered a minor leak of radioactive water from a storage tank. The spill was immediately contained within the facility's secondary containment systems, preventing any release to the external environment. Emergency response teams quickly isolated the affected area and began cleanup procedures. The radioactive water spill involved low-level contaminated water in the reprocessing operations. Plant officials emphasized that radiation levels in the spilled material were well below safety thresholds and posed no risk to workers or the surrounding community. The leak was attributed to structural stress caused by the earthquake's ground motion. Nuclear regulatory authorities dispatched inspection teams to Rakasho and other nuclear facilities in the affected region. These comprehensive safety evaluations confirmed that all critical safety systems had functioned properly during the earthquake. No damage to reactor containment structures 
or primary cooling systems was detected at any facility. The incident at Rakesho highlighted the importance of robust secondary containment systems designed to handle minor equipment failures during seismic events. The facility's emergency response procedures proved effective in quickly identifying, containing, and addressing the leak without compromising public safety. Other nuclear installations in the region, including power plants in Hokkaido and Aomori, reported no significant issues following their post-earthquake safety inspections. Emergency cooling systems, backup power supplies, and structural integrity assessments all confirmed that these facilities had successfully weathered the 7.5 magnitude earthquake. The nuclear emergency response demonstrated the effectiveness of Japan's enhanced protocols, developed and refined following previous seismic events. These procedures ensure that even minor incidents are quickly contained and thoroughly investigated to maintain the highest safety standards. Prime Minister Ishiba addressed the nation within hours of the earthquake, delivering an urgent warning about the elevated seismic risks facing the affected region. He said the December 8th earthquake had significantly increased the probability of strong aftershocks and potentially larger seismic events in the coming week. That warning was based on scientific analysis from the Japan Meteorological Agency and the Earthquake Research Committee. Seismologists identified patterns in the earthquake's rupture characteristics that suggested elevated stress on adjacent fault segments, creating conditions favorable for additional large earthquakes. Current scientific models indicate the probability of a magnitude 8 or larger earthquake occurring within the next seven days has increased substantially compared to baseline levels. This elevated risk reflects the complex stress redistribution that occurs when major fault segments rupture during significant earthquakes. The affected region sits within one of Japan's most seismic zones, where multiple tectonic plates interact and create ongoing earthquake potential. The December 8th event occurred along fault systems that have historically generated some of Japan's most powerful earthquakes, including events that triggered devastating tsunamis. Seismologists are closely monitoring aftershock patterns to better understand how stress has been redistributed across the regional fault network. The frequency, magnitude, and spatial distribution of aftershocks provide crucial data for assessing the likelihood of larger follow-up earthquakes. The earthquake's location and characteristics show similarities to historical events that preceded major seismic sequences in the region. While each earthquake is unique, these, these patterns help scientists estimate probability ranges for future seismic activity and guide public safety recommendations. Government authorities have maintained elevated emergency preparedness levels across all affected prefectures. Emergency response teams remain on high alert, evacuation centers continue operating at enhanced readiness levels, and communication systems are being monitored continuously to ensure rapid response capability. Residents in the affected areas have been advised to maintain emergency supplies, review evacuation routes, and stay informed about seismic activity through official channels. The government has emphasized that while the elevated risk is temporary, the potential consequences of a larger earthquake require sustained vigilance and preparedness. The current monitoring systems deployed across northern Japan represent some of the world's advanced earthquake detection and analysis capabilities. These networks provide real-time data on ground motion, fault stress, and other parameters that help scientists track evolving seismic conditions. What makes this situation particularly concerning is the potential for a magnitude 8 earthquake, which would release approximately 10 times more energy than the December 8th event. Such an earthquake could generate significantly larger tsunamis and cause more widespread damage across the region. The scientific community continues analyzing data from the December 8th earthquake to refine risk assessments and improve understanding of the regional seismic hazard. This ongoing research will inform long-term preparedness strategies and help communities better prepare for future seismic threats. Japan's response to this magnitude 7.5 earthquake 
demonstrates how advanced warning systems and emergency protocols can protect lives during major seismic events. With elevated megaquake risk continuing through the week, sustained preparedness remains essential. Subscribe for ongoing coverage of aftershock developments and seismic analysis.